Hello, I'm Cindy Garcia. You're watching GBC World News, broadcasting from Houston, Texas. Thank you so much for joining us. In China, authorities there dig up damaged train carriages to further investigate the cause of a deadly crash that killed at least 40 people. GBC World News has more. Authorities dig up train carriages buried after a rail accident killed at least 40 people in eastern China. The cars will undergo further investigation as part of an inquest into the deadly crash between two high-speed trains. The official Xinhua news agency said the railway ministry had initially ordered the damaged carriages to be quickly buried, sparking speculations over a possible cover-up of its mishandling of the disaster. Government officials said burying the carriages was necessary to allow mechanical equipment access to the crash site. Beijing has since sacked three mid-level railway officials. Xinhua reported that the government has begun paying compensation to victims' families, with the first family given the equivalent of 77,500 U.S. dollars. The accident has raised concerns about the safety of the country's high-profile and fast-growing rail network and could undermine China's plans to export its high-speed train technology. In the Philippines, storms batter the country, leaving seven people dead. GBC World News reports. At least seven people are dead and another 11 missing after floods devastated parts of central Philippines late Monday and early Tuesday. The main island of Luzon was battered by wind and rain that forced schools to close and grounded domestic flights. Officials say the seven reported deaths were caused by mudslides. Eleven fishermen were caught in the storms and are still missing at sea. Tens of thousands have been moved to shelters. Officials say the amount of rain in the past 24 hours alone in some parts of the Philippines was more than the monthly average for the entire month of July. Meanwhile, in Norway, police announce a reduced number of deaths after the weekend shooting and bombing incidents. GBC World News brings you the story. Police in Oslo, Norway, reduced the number of deaths from a shooting and bombing incident over the weekend from 93 to 76. Police said some of the shooting fatalities might have been counted twice in the rush to attend to the injured. So I think uh, the situation, which was chaotic, as I said, uh, and that the priority was given to help those who were injured, uh, made the, the number uncertain. 32-year-old Anders Bering Breivik is being investigated for his role in the shooting of 68 people at the summer camp and for bombing a government building that killed eight. Also Monday, another candlelit vigil to remember the victims and their families. Thousands of flowers and candles have been placed in front of the Oslo Cathedral. Norwegians have vowed to stay strong through the mourning process. The number of Kenyans who will need food aid during the drought will rise from 2.4 to 3.5 million by September. The United Nations made that announcement on Tuesday, adding pressure on donors to respond to the Horn of Africa's hunger crisis. Some 11.6 million people are going hungry in the triangle of death that straddles Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia, with pockets of famine existing in rebel-controlled southern Somalia. The food uh, beneficiary population is expected to increase from the current 2.4 million. And the mid-season Kenya Food Security Sharing Group assessment conducted in May indicates that up to 3.5 million people will need food assistance in the coming months. Kenya declared the drought a national disaster in late May, while the UN has categorized the situation in East Africa's largest economy as an emergency. While some communities have lost their animals to the drought, those living in urban slums are struggling to buy food as the price of staple foods has soared. The UN World Food Program says it was at present giving aid to 1.7 million of the 2.4 million people needing help. While the government is targeting another 800,000. The UN says the food shortfall for the next six months was estimated at 103,000 tons, valued at 91 million. And the figure could rise after a more detailed assessment in August. 
The region experiences recurring droughts, which are becoming increasingly severe due to climate change. Plans to mobilize supplementary food products for children in response to the Horn of Africa crisis could make this the biggest ever operation to deliver these products that are highly effective in treating malnutrition in the first 1,000 days of life. You're watching GBC World News. I'm Cindy Garcia. Coming up, a tribute to Michael Jackson might not go on as planned. We'll be right back.